An estimated one in five Americans experience mental illness each year. Federal law requires insurers to provide equal coverage for mental health conditions. But as Dr. John LaPook reports, that's not always the case. You can see, in just looking at it, how close they are. Yeah, they were very, very close. They did everything together. She lost her best friend. In 2013, Brian Cada's 15-year-old daughter took her own life. A year and a half later, his younger daughter attempted suicide. The psychiatrists, the therapists, and the family members were unanimous that we needed to get her into a residential care service so that she could deal with the loss of her sister. His insurer denied residential treatment. A less intensive level of care was approved. The hospital said what that translates to is your daughter has not failed often enough to get a longer-term treatment center. So she has to have attempted suicide yes. several times, each time rolling the dice, because right. it might actually succeed. That's correct. After a second suicide attempt, she was approved for residential care. After three weeks there, the clinical staff described an increase in suicidal ideation and that she clearly met criteria to continue treatment there. But just days later, the insurer, United Behavioral Health, part of United Health Group, wrote, the services asked for are not medically needed. They were basically uh, protecting their profitability. Kata paid out of pocket for as long as he could, another three weeks. Mehram Bendat represents 50,000 members in a class action lawsuit against United Behavioral Health. Well, you're the managed care reviewer and I'm the patient or the provider. I could protest all I want and you could always hold up your guidelines and say, look, you just don't meet these criteria. But what if the criteria themselves are just flagrantly off base? And you think they are? Well, I, I don't think so. The court thought so. Earlier this year, the federal court ruled against UBH and called the guidelines flawed, unreasonable, and more restrictive than generally accepted standards of care, and that financial incentives infected the guideline development process. United Behavioral Health told CBS News, we want our members to have the mental health support they need when they need it. The company says it is revising guidelines to be more in line with the way practicing clinicians actually determine the level of care a patient needs. It takes time, and because she didn't have that time, she went back into a withdrawal situation. Kada has had very little contact with his daughter since she left that residential facility. Where does that leave you? It leaves me the, with the sensation that I have really lost both daughters. In the case against United Behavioral Health, the court has yet to rule on remedies. Dr. John LaPook, CBS News, New York.